I do not know one person who does not want to stretch their dollar as far as possible. And we all know dollars are made of paper and they don't stretch very well. And it seems like recently they stretch even less. The grocery prices are out of control. So we want to get the most for every dollar that we spend at the grocery store. So in this video, I want to talk to you about 17 hacks that will help keep your foods fresher for longer and will reduce waste. I think we can all benefit from doing so. And also, don't forget, I am sure there are going to be other ways that you can save food, make it stay fresh longer that I do not cover in this video. I have a great community. Put it down in the comments below so that other people might be able to take from your knowledge as well and implement into their life. We like to share our ideas on this channel. If you do enjoy my channel, do not forget before you leave, click the like button down below. It's a little thumbs up thing. And also hit subscribe so that you know when I have more videos coming out. Let's get into the ideas of how to keep food fresher longer. Number one is to store tomatoes on your counter. Don't put them in the fridge when you get home. Most of the time you'll see when you go into the store, they aren't in the refrigerated section. They're in the produce section, but they're out in the air. So when you get home, do the same. This helps maintain their best flavor. Now, if you do have tomatoes and you see that they are starting to go over, this is a great time to chop some up add it to some pre-made spaghetti sauce or make your own spaghetti sauce. You can also add it to any other kind of pasta sauce or you can use it to help add some chunks to your pizza sauce. There are many things you can do to utilize those tomatoes before they do go too bad. Number two is when your honey starts to crystallize at the bottom of the honey jar or bottle. What you'll see is when you turn it over, it will not easily pour over. What we do in this case is we boil some water in a pot, then we turn the water off and let it stay hot. We then put the jar or the container in that water and let it sit. Again, it's not on, it's just sitting in that hot to warm water as it reduces in temperature. So I give it a couple of hours and after that couple of hours, what you'll see when you take it back out is it's returned to its regular form. So this is a way to make sure whenever your honey starts to crystallize, you can bring it back to the consistency that you want it in. Number three, when you get home after you buy berries, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries at the store, you want to take them out of that clamshell container. Now that clamshell container is great to store them in because you want air to circulate in your berries. However, you first want to dump them all out, maybe on a paper towel. You want to remove any that are bruised or spoiled or maybe open because if left in the container with all of the other ones that are just fine, it will will cause them to do the same. It will cause them to get mushy and break down and that icky stuff to start to grow. You can also take your berries and wash them by taking water with a splash of white vinegar and washing them before you put them back in the fridge. Now, before you do that, make sure you rinse them extremely well and lay them out and get them really dry. And then you can put them back in that clam shell container or another container that allows the air to circulate around them. Number four is when you've overbaked something or you have a baked good that is extra hard and you really want that soft, warm, mushy baked item like a cookie or a brownie. Well, all you have to do is take a slice of sandwich bread, put it in the airtight container overnight. When you wake up the next morning, I guarantee you that that baked good is going to be nice and soft. And if you touch the bread, you're going to see that the bread is, if not extremely hard, very much getting there. This is a great way to make sure you, those brownies or those cookies or those other baked goods can still be good even if you overbake them or they've been sitting for a bit and just gotten a little hard. Number five, you can take that piece of bread and also put it into your brown sugar. If your brown sugar you find is clumpy, you can just put a piece of bread in it for a bit. It will not take any time at all. Again, overnight's probably adequate. You can go back and you'll see that your brown sugar is back to the way it was when you bought it. Take the bread out and you're all set. Number six is regarding your lettuce or leafy greens. When you buy them from the store, just like the berries, when you come home, lay them out. Pull out anything that's bad or wilted or browning because you don't want it to do the same to the rest of the bunch. From there, you can put this in a container or 
leave it back in the container it was in, but I recommend lining it with either paper towels or a towel, such as a dish towel that you utilize for that purpose. Again, to help soak up any moisture that's there. And what you want to do is still be able to let that lettuce, again, have that air circulate around it when it is in the fridge. Number seven is to grocery shop in order of temperature. So you're gonna start out by shopping in the aisles that are room temperature, the things that do not have to be temperature controlled. From there, you're going to move on to the produce and fruits, where again, not all of those things have to be refrigerated. Yes, some fruits are, but a lot of times it's just they want a little bit more of a chill. Then you move to the next coldest temperature, your refrigerated items, and then finally on to your frozen items. What this is going to do, if you were to regularly shop, you'll see that sometimes the beginning of the store is refrigerated, the end of the store is refrigerated or frozen. And if you go from left to right or right to left, at some point, whatever you get in the beginning, if it happens to be a refrigerated item, it's going to spend way less time or way more time outside of its temperature controlled fridge or freezer home from the grocery store to your house. So this helps with the longevity of an item if you are able to reduce the amount of time that it spends outside of its best optimal temperature. Number eight is super quick, but it's super important because it's one thing that you can stock up on when it's really inexpensive or when it's on a great sale and put it in the freezer, and that is butter. Maybe you want to invest in some wonderful grass-fed butter or this wonderful specialty butter that you really love and you really want to see it on sale, but you don't use a lot of it. Butter does excellent in the freezer. So I love buying butter in bulk. Definitely put it in the freezer. That way I always have it on hand. Number nine is to freeze lemon and lime juice in an ice cube tray. I don't know about you, but most of the time when I need lemons or limes, I really only need half a lemon, one lemon at the most for the recipe. Well, when you go to certain stores, there are certain stores where you can't buy them individually. You have to buy this big bag of them, or maybe that's the better deal. This is great because you can go ahead and take those lemons or those limes, squeeze the juice out of them, put that, pour that into your ice cube tray. And this is wonderful. Then take those ice cubes, put them in a bag, label them. And the next time you need lemon or lime juice, you've got it there readily available and you don't have to go buy a whole bunch of lemons or even just an individual lemon because it's there, it's fresh, it's convenient, and you've frozen it for the next time you need it. Number 10 is about bananas. And before we get into the banana situation, I wanna know, are you a green banana eater or a spotted banana eater? My daughter loves green bananas and I love spotted bananas. Put it down in the comments below. I just am very, very curious. I think when it gets, the more ripe it gets, correct me if I'm wrong, it's more sweet and I am not a big fruit eater altogether. So I really prefer it to be on the, the spotted side. Anyway, talking about bananas, I love a good smoothie and a banana to a fruit smoothie just adds this little bit of nice smooth texture. And I don't know if you've checked this out lately, but if you go try to just find frozen bananas, it's difficult and a lot of times it's mixed in with other fruit but it's really expensive. I, I was going and buying banana and strawberry blends in a frozen bag and I thought, geez, that's actually kind of expensive. But then I looked in it, I'm like, there's so many bananas in here and that was so expensive. There are way more bananas than strawberries. So I thought, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I still buy strawberries frozen because they are wonderful frozen. They are way less expensive, but bananas are not. So go buy your bunch of bananas Bananas fresh are super inexpensive. Chop them up, put them on a baking tray on parchment paper. You want to make sure that you freeze them separately first. If you just lump them into a bag, they're just gonna freeze into a, a bag. So I put them on a tray with some parchment paper, put them in the freezer for a couple of hours, take them out, they're frozen, I put them in a bag, and then it's easy to pull out what I need when I do need those frozen bananas. Why are avocados so tricky? They will not be ready, they will not be ripe, and then they are ripe, and if you don't catch them in that, that short amount of time, they quickly ripen way too much and they're no longer good. I don't know what it is. It's, it's an avocado thing. Number 11 is about those avocados. So if you've ever looked into how to know if an avocado was ready, usually if you can pop off that little bottom stem part and it's like 
dark, then it's ready. Or you can just fill it, and if it's just a tiny bit of give to it, it's about ready. Well, the great thing is, you know, or the not great thing is, if you buy a bunch of them and they all become ready at one time, then you're like, I can't eat that much avocado. Really easy. Take your avocados, once they are almost ripe or right, right at ripe, and put them in the refrigerator. The refrigerator will then slow the process of that continual ripening stage. Number 12 is regarding fresh herbs. Now, if you don't have your own herb garden and you've recently needed herbs for a recipe, you might have also noticed the issue where you have to buy more than is needed for the recipe. They come in these big bunches and they're fairly expensive. Well, this is a great idea to take the rest of those herbs. If your recipe calls for fresh herbs, take the rest, chop them up. You can also then mix them different herbs together. What you're going to do is use that ice cube tray again. You're going to put your herbs in the ice cube tray. You're gonna finish filling it up with some olive oil. So the next time you're sauteing something such as like chicken, maybe it's a super bland, you can take out one of these great olive oil herb cubes, put it in the pan and it gives delicious flavor to your meal. Number 13 is regarding fruits and vegetables that should be put in time out by themselves. When you put them with other fruits and vegetables, they make those fruits and vegetables ripen faster. And that's because they emit a gas called ethylene gas. And what this does is cause and cause them to ripen. And if they emit a good amount of it, they cause other items to ripen with them. So ones that ripen rather fast and really should be left alone are apples, potatoes, bananas, avocados, broccoli, tomatoes. These items have more ethylene gas that if they're put next to other items, they're going to cause them to ripen more. So just think about these items and how you can separate them so they don't make your other foods ripen faster than you can eat them. Number 14 is when you do have meats, store them in the back of the fridge. You really, with meats, you don't wanna play around with them being spoiled. So if they're not in the freezer, or even if they are in the freezer, put them in a, the back part. Every time you open that refrigerator, that freezer door, anything closer to the front has a quick temperature change. So the further you can put it back in the coldest part of the fridge or freezer, the better it is for it. Number 15 is also talking about that temperature change. You know, a lot of people store their eggs and their milk in their refrigerator door. Now, unless you're a family that goes through eggs extremely quickly or milk really quickly, if you do, this tip would, would matter anyway. Think about those things if they're in the door and they're open, shut, open, shut, open, shut. How many times a day they're getting blasts of temperature changes, which if you're trying to keep them for longer, maybe you don't go through a quart or a gallon out of milk that quickly, it's going to make it spoil faster than if it's in the fridge where it's at its most stable temperature. Number 16 is to make sure that you are cleaning your refrigerator. You want to make sure you are cleaning out things like bacteria, mold, and yeast, and if they grow in your fridge, not only is that gross, but they could affect the foods that you're buying that are also in your fridge. You could easily just use soap and water to clean out your fridge. You can use a little bit of vinegar type uh, cleaner that you can make yourself as well to get your fridge nice and clean. And finally, number 17 is to invest in a food saver. I got mine from Costco. Just go on Costco's website if you have a membership, check them out, look at the reviews. Food savers are pretty much very similar these days, so one brand is not a huge difference as, and then, than another, but as always, do your research and read reviews. But the great thing about a food saver is you can actually pull out all the air. Let's say you go and you buy chicken in bulk, and then you want to then individually portion off the chicken. You can do that with a food saver and help remove that air, which is going to help reduce freezer burn and help it last longer in the freezer. You can then use it for portioning off meals. Let's say you make a big casserole, that it will keep foods fresh longer because you're pulling out that air. And then also you can utilize food savers for things like uh, the material that is on chip bags or like cracker bags. That they can seal those. So every time you open it, you just cut it open, seal it again. That helps the air from more air from getting in. You know, if you just roll it down, you put a clip on it, it's still accessible to extra air. But if you can completely seal it off, yes, there's the air that's already currently in the bag, but you don't have extra air coming in and making those items staler quicker. 
Don't forget to put your tip down below to share with this community. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you did, click on that like button for me. It really does help share my videos with other people on YouTube. Also click on the subscribe button. It's completely free. You just have to click on it. That just shows you when you go on your subscriptions, my videos pop up for you to see in the future. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I look forward to seeing you next weekend for a new video.